Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory and today we are going to see the basics of impedance matching. How this little impedance matching network work. Let's go! So guys, for this experiment we have here an impedance matching network that is matching a 50 ohm signal here coming from a signal generator to a 150 ohm resistor here. This is a common topology, an LCC network. Actually for this kind of matching here of three times the impedance, this is not the best network but as it has has two capacitors it becomes very good here so you can adjust and see the results in the oscilloscope so looking from this side the generator you see 50 ohm and the resistor looking from this side you see 150 ohm so in theory all the available power of the generator can be delivered to the input port of the network and it will be dissipated by the 150 ohm resistor here are the details of the network we have the series inductor and the two variable capacitors and here the load is the 150 resistor. Using the oscilloscope probes, we can see the voltage profile at the input and at the output of the network. And we see that the output voltage over the load resistor, the blue trace here, is higher. This makes sense because if we are matching the load to the generator, we are delivering the power from the generator in the load. But the load has higher resistance and we need a higher voltage to deliver this power to the load. It's important to understand that power is not voltage and power is not current. Power is the combination of voltage and current. And power can be represented as different combinations. We can have a very high impedance power when we have a very high voltage and a very low current. And we can also dissipate the same amount of power in other load in a lower impedance load using lower impedance power because for a lower impedance we need higher current and lower voltage it's important to understand this concept that power can be represented as different ratios of voltage and current and a ratio of voltage and current is an impedance when we talk about impedance matching we are talking about delivering the available power of the source to the given load. From the maximum power transfer theorem, we know that the maximum power is delivered to the load when the load has the same resistance as the generator. So here we have a 50 ohm generator and a 50 ohm load and this is the combination that allows the maximum power to be delivered. This power delivered here is the available power of the generator. So guys, if we want to deliver all the available power of the source to a different load, a load with different resistance, in this example 150 ohm, we need to transform the voltage and current of the source to match the voltage and current profile needed from the load to dissipate all the available power of the generator. And the box, the machine that do this work of transformation of voltage and current is the matching network. The matching network is a black box that can take the available power from the source that has a power impedance, an ideal combination of voltage and current, and can transform this profile, this voltage and current, in this example, to a higher voltage and lower current. And this higher voltage and lower current can deliver the available power of the source in a different load. In this example, 150 ohm. So the impedance matching network is changing the voltage and current profile so the power can be delivered in a different resistance than the generator resistance. We are going to have the maximum power delivered to the load when we have the maximum voltage at the load. So we can tune here and we can see that we are well matched. This is the case here because our load is a resistor and the power delivered and dissipated in a resistor is proportional to the voltage. In the case of a complex impedance we would need to measure the current and voltage to have a proper power reading. We can also measure and tune our impedance matching network using the S11 parameter. That is measuring the reflected power from the input port of the network. When we have a good impedance match, no power will be reflected. To measure the reflected power in the input of the impedance matching network, the power that is reflected back to the generator, we need a directional bridge or a directional coupler. We are going to study how directional couplers work works in next video. But the main idea 
is that the directional coupler can decouple the forward wave from the backward wave. The spectrum analyzer is sweeping the spectrum, generating a signal that is synchronized with the frequency it's reading. This signal is applied to this port of the coupler. The signal travels through the coupler and it comes back here in this port. This port will be connected to the impedance matching network here in the place of the generator we are using. We are working in a fifth ohm impedance system and the impedance matching network will transform the power to a higher impedance so it can be delivered in the 150 ohm resistor here or load. The power that is unable to be matched will be reflected back to the directional coupler but now this reflected power will come out in this port here. So the fourth power from the generator goes through the coupler and the reflected power comes in the side port. This reflected power that we are reading on the line of the spectrum analyzer. So now we are sweeping in frequency and reading the reflected power. With the cable open, with no load here in the cable, we see that we have zero dBm because all the power that's coming from the generator is being reflected by the open end and no power is dissipated because it don't have any load in the end of the transmission line. If we place this fifth ohm termination here, we can see that now the power drops to negative 30 dBm, meaning that almost no power is returning back and now the power is being dissipated in the load. Now we are going to connect the directional coupler and we can see that as we connect, we see a notch in the frequency domain. The notch is the point where the impedance matching network is working at its best because this point represents almost no power being reflected. So all power at these frequencies here are entering the impedance matching network and are being delivered to our 150 ohm load. In other frequencies, we see that the impedance matching network will not work properly and almost all the power is being reflected. We can turn the frequency here, adjusting the variable capacitors and now the perfect impedance transformation is happening at 50 MHz. Measuring the reflected power or the S11 parameter of the system using the directional coupler is the best way to tune a matching network. It's interesting to see in the oscilloscope the frequency sweeping and we see that the peak of the blue voltage, the voltage over the load, needs to correspond to this notch here because we have maximum voltage in the load at this point and no reflected power at that frequency. We can design the network using a hybrid approach. We can start defining the reactance needed in the inductor part. And this is really interesting guys, it's important to understand why we're going to do this. We can see that in this case, the input impedance, the fifth ohm from the generator, will appear in series with the inductor. So we can easily calculate the reactance needed using the Q factor we want for the network. For the case of this network, I use it a Q factor of 5 and knowing the reactance we can calculate the inductance knowing the frequency we want to operate. In this case we are operating in 50 megahertz so the inductance needed is close to 1 micro -enhi. Don't forget the formula for the reactance 2 pi FL. This calculation makes sense because we know that the Q factor of a resonance system when the resistive part is in series with the inductive reactance is Q equals the inductive reactance over the series resistance. And in this case, the generator impedance appears in series with the inductor. So the series resistance for this inductor here is the fifth ohm from the generator. So you can see that this formula here is only this formula here reverse it so we get the inductive reactance needed and we can calculate using the frequency the inductor needed. Now that we know the inductor needed is much easier to finish the design on the Smith chart. We can use any Smith chart calculator to finish the design. So we know that the generator is fifth ohm, we know our inductor one micro enhi and looking here we already know where the impedance gonna land. From the generator we have fifth ohm, now we have a series inductor, so now we added series reactance and now we are in this point here. Let's see what's gonna happen when we add the shunt capacitor. We see that with the shunt capacitor we move it a bit lower here and now we need to come close to 105 ohm here in this point here to match the load we are using in the test.
So we need to make this movement here, okay? To make this movement, we need series capacitance. So let's place a series capacitance here. Let's say it is 3 picofarad, and we see that we move it in the right path here, but we need a little more capacitance here. Yeah, we are close to 100 ohms. We need to, to get a little close to 150. So let's increase this a bit. Yeah, here. And this needs to be 6 pico. 6.5 pico. Yeah, now, now we can see that we started with the 5th ohm generator. We added series inductance. We moved to the downside here using a shunt capacitance. And we can return back to the 105th ohm impedance using the series capacitance. And this is the way I designed the network. I first calculate the inductance and finish the design using the Smith chart because it is easier and we can see what's happening. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and I see you in the next Our Electronics video.